Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will play piano at this time. Thank you. Uh, shall we sing him three, five, three, live piano? Thank you. pray. May the Lord guide our service uh, in the afternoon. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray.
in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak. Uh, we talk about uh, Hebrews is uh, go one step further, better and more. And uh, yeah, we talk about uh, Jesus is better than angels and uh, better than Moses, a better high priest. Uh, uh, so we, are, we will continue the topic on uh, better high priest. So we, yesterday we talked about the priesthood is a noble position, uh, present God in front of man and present man in front of God, right? And uh, this position, uh, nobody was able to get by himself. Like all the uh, God assigned position in the church, we shall not reject and we shall not fight for it. Uh, and thank God in this generation, everybody is a royal priesthood. Now we talk about the process, how Jesus become a high priest. Uh, he become uh, the author of uh, eternal salvation because he died for us on the cross, become uh, the source now we can go to for eternal life. And this process is not easy. He uh, suffer a lot, he cry out loud, uh, he choose to submissive. And then indeed he uh, say it is done. Uh, the salvation plan is done. So we should be very grateful about, uh, about his love, right? That's what we, we were here yesterday. Now we shall continue to talk about, um, so Jesus was, from the tribe of Judah, and high priest was supposed to be from the tribe of Levi. Aaron was from the tribe of Levi. And now can Jesus can be a high priest? Uh, it is from the order of Melchizedek. Yesterday we talked about Melchizedek is before Moses. Um, and he was a high priest of God. Uh, and he blessed Abraham and Abraham offered tithe to him. Uh, but he uh, did not, he was not, at, at that time there was no, there was no tribe of, of Levi no, at all, because again, there, there was only Abraham, there was no, uh, there was no uh, Levi yet, right? Now the Bible talk about, so what, who is this Melchizedek? Uh, spiritual speaking, he is the king of righteousnesses. He is the king of peace, and he is uh, he was an everlasting king. Why do we say that? Uh, because the word Melchizedek, homework number one, check your Rema, Melchizedek. Uh, check uh, Rema so you know that this word Melchizedek is really king and righteousness, right? It's uh, composed of these two words, Melchizedek. Uh, these two words, uh, uh, kin and righteousnesses. Uh, the word itself really, uh, like uh, there's a place called uh, Field Field, like in New Jersey, a, a town called Field Field. Now, you know, Field Field is a beautiful land, right? Beautiful place, right? Um, and so again, Marquesdek means that kin of righteousness. And what, why do you call him uh, king of peace? because he was a king from, uh, from Jerusalem. He was a king of Jerusalem. Uh, so Jeremiah, what does uh, Solomon mean? Jerusalem, Solomon, what does Solomon mean? Peace, that's right, peace, right? So remember you sing a hymn in, your, in the past? Shalom, my friend. Have you ever sing this hymn? This is not hymn, this is a, have you ever seen this one? Shalom, my friend, shalom, my friend. You do. So what does shalom mean? Thank you. Peace, right? So he uh, was, uh, Makestek 
was a king from Jerusalem, so he was king of peace. And we talk about yesterday, he was uh, as no father, no mother, no beginning of days, no end of life, right? Uh, just like the son of God. So he was an everlasting king, everlasting king. Also, it's, it's, it really fit that Jesus take, uh, uh, take the high priesthood from the order of Melchizedek, right? Let's read it again. Uh, Hebrew chapter 6, verse 10. Jeremiah, Hebrew 6, verse 10. Um, Hebrew chapter, uh, I'm sorry, um, my bad. Chapter, chapter 5, verse 10. Chapter 5, verse 10. Yes. Oh. Verse 9, I talk about he became uh, the author of everlasting salvation. That is, that is Jesus, right? And then he became a high priest from the order of Melchizedek. Also, we know Melchizedek, we know that Jesus is also a king of righteousnesses. Jeremiah, what do you think Jesus was a king, is a king of righteousnesses? What do you think? Why do you think Jesus is a king of righteousnesses also? We're not, we're not going to talk about Melchizedek, we're going to talk about Jesus now. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, can you, uh, can maybe Jonathan read First John 1, 9? The Bible keep talking about Jesus is just. He is, he is just, right? I think this verse you are familiar with because we read it many times. First John 1, 9. Uh, Jonathan, could you read? Why? If he confesses sins, he is faithful and just. He is faithful and just. just. Right? So you talk about Jesus is faithful and just. When Jesus was preaching, even the person who want to fight for with him says that, oh, you are honest man, you know? You, you, you do not seek for, uh, for any fl flattery. Put, put your, uh, put, put your children the qing mian. Oh. You do not seek for, yeah, uh, pay attention to this, show partiality to that, right? No, you do not do that, right? So you can see that uh, Jesus uh, was from the order of Melchizedek. He was also righteous. And how do you know that, Jonathan? Jesus is a king of peace also. Jonathan, what, what do you think? Okay, okay, thank you. Well, he is king of peace to me, like he also provides us with a lot of peace, right? He says that in the world, you have tribulation, but in me, you shall have peace, right? Is that right, Jonathan? Yeah, this is uh, in uh, John 16, 33, right? And of course, Jesus, Jesus said, resurrected Jesus said, I am Alpha, I am Omega, right? And the beginning and the end, he was, uh, he was and he is and he is to be. So, he is also an everlasting king. So again, uh, taking the high, high priest after the order of Melchizedek, his uh, Jesus characteristics, uh, righteousness, uh, peace forever, also just like that of Melchizedek. Not only that, the Bible says that even Abraham offered tithe and uh, Levi was from Abraham. Uh, so even Levi, uh, in that sense, even Levi over tithe to Abraham, uh, to Melchizedek. Huh? Let's read uh, Hebrew chapter seven. Hebrew chapter seven, verse four to 10. Aaron, please read. Seven, four to 10. Six, but he, being 
Yeah, as if Levi was in the loin of Abraham, he was not born yet, but he was there. Then, then his Levi is supposed to receive tithe from people because they are full time worker, their livelihood, their um, their offering, their um, they are supported by their brethren. So everybody offer tithes to to them, right? But even Levi who received tithe in the loin of Abraham through Abraham's hands, also over ties to Melchizedek. So you can see uh, how, uh, how noble, uh, yeah, this, uh, this uh, king of Melchizedek was, right? Now, yeah, so we talk about Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek to become the high priest, right? Now, when uh, Aaron's children become a, uh, High priest, they did not make an oath. It's not come by an oath, right? But for Jesus to become the high priest, they were confirmed by two unchangeable things. Number one is oath. Number two is promise, right? Now in the old days, like if you uh, argue about something, you say, I swear, I never do it. Usually the Confrontation will be concluded by the swearness uh, in the in the a- Asian society, right? Because swear is something um, something very serious, right? And promise promise from God is oh, will will, all, uh, will not be changed. Also, that's why for Jesus to be the high priest, uh, it was set up and confirmed by these two unchangeable things. Right? Let's turn to Hebrew chapter seven. Verse 20 to 22, 7, 20 to 22, Johnny, 7, 20 to 22. Yes, uh, we already read this verse in the book of Psalm, in David's Psalm, right? The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So it was by uh, swear of the Lord, uh, swear of the Lord. Um, Johnny, can you continue? Please continue reading um, Hebrew chapter six, 13 to 17, 13 to 17. Okay, so really over here, talk about all the dispute will be ended by a swear. And also mention about when God was a blessed Abraham, he also swear by himself because nobody can be greater than God himself. So he's, he swear by himself saying that a concerning blessing, I will blessing you greatly, right? I will multiply you greatly, right? God swear by himself. So. The, ble- the blessing Abraham received also by these two unchangeable things. Number one, swear. Number two, promise, right? Before you enter into the land, or, or, you, or at the beginning of entering land, God already said that, I promise that your children will be as many as what? As many as, yeah, stars in the skies and, and sand in the seashore, right? This one promise, second promise is this thing will be belong to you, right? And then after Abraham offer his only uh, begotten son, only son, I'm sorry, uh, offer Isaac, uh, God was so happy and he swear, I, he swear by himself saying that again, I will, uh, I, 
I, I, I, I will bless you, right? So he repeated his promise. So, so the author of uh, Book of Hebrew mentioned this historical event that Abraham received the blessing by these uh, two unchangeable things. Jesus Christ as a high priest also was not, uh, confirmed by these two unchangeable things, right? Now let's read about not only swear, but also promise, right? Promise. Hebrew chapter eight, verse six. Hebrew eight, six. Uh, Stephen, would you please read? Yes, uh, Jesus has obtained a more excellent ministry. Uh, he is also a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promise. Well, Jesus was uh, established on a better promise. Uh, of course, this promise was like uh, already prophesied in the book of in the book of uh, Psalm, right? Is that right? The Bible already prophesied, you will be a priest from the order of Melchizedek. This is a, a promise already. Is that right? Hello? Agree? Yeah. So again, yeah. Um, you know what? Um, I don't know you, but uh, do you believe in all the promises in the Bible? Alex, what do you think? Do you think the promise in the Bible really, you hold on it, you um, appreciate it, you um, really believe in it? Alex, what do you think? Yeah. Can you give me an example? Which promise that you really take into your heart and you do it and indeed it fulfilled in your life? Proverb three five. Can you? Say, what did you say? I think so. I think so. So you you trust into that. You believe into that. You believe in that, in that right? Many words. Many words. You take into your heart. You believe that is true, and that is, you know, you do not. You do not trust on your own understanding. You rely on the Lord. God will guide your path. You believe that God will guide your path. Oh. And take to your heart. And it becomes yes in your life. I checked it. And it's real. This is called promise, right? This is called promise. Yeah, I, I personally, I, I, when I read Bible, I always like to pay attention to his promise. Because, so I, because I know that he will never lie to me. If I experience that he ever lied to me, then why do I continue to worship him? Why do I need to continue to worship him? Because you are a liar, right? But I experience that he is not a liar. If I do not really receive right now, maybe, maybe at this field, I pray for this, right? But I did not get it yet. I pray for that or, or for that. If all my prayers that, of course, I'm in my 60s, right? I, I've been praying many, for many things in my life, right? Of course, I, not all my prayers was answered, right? But if I say that a lot of prayer were answered, a lot of promise in the Bible was real. And some of them, even though I didn't get it, like, uh, like uh, uh, Paul, he says, I have a thong in my body, right? He prayed for three times. He did not, he did not get what he wanted. He still feel like, Man, the thong is still there, right? But guess what? It's, he experienced that the Lord talked to him, my, but my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, my power, you know, become perfect to those who, uh, to those who are weak. Therefore, he's become to boast about his thong. Look at this thong, right? Look at this thong I have. It humbles me. Look at this thong I have, you know, even though it is uh, Satan's attraction. But it made me uh, not, not fail in my, in, my, in my faith. 
So in, well, this is Paul's experience. This is to, to me personally the same. I mean, we pray for many things concerning the promise of God. Some you get it, some you don't get it, right? But the one you don't get it, you still feel like, after years later, you still feel like, oh, thank God, I did not get it. For example, of course you pray all the time. You hope God can fulfill your, 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 your dream, right? When I was a little boy, my dream was that I want to be a teacher, uh, elementary school teacher. Really, when I was, uh, when, 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 I, when we were in elementary school, the teacher asked you to write an article. What do you wish to be in the future, right? My, my answer never changed. I want to be a teacher. But guess what? In the teacher's entrance examination, I failed. I, I was not accepted. But years later, when I turned back or well, as a pastor, it's like a spiritual, I, I, I dare not to say teacher, but it's a spiritual like a worker of God. You speak all the time to, to people too. And uh, if I become a teacher in Taiwan, really they, they pay good, they pay, uh, or especially in my generation, many teachers, they retire very early. They just put their money in the bank. You got 17% interest income, right? So can you imagine 17% interest income? You, basically you don't need to work at all, right? So many teachers retire early. Imagination. Anyway, I, 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 I speak too far. What is my point? My point is that the promise that you, that in the Bible is always yes, right? Always yes. Let's read the Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Um, 1, 20. Uh, Alex? I think you read it 1, verse 20. All the promise, no matter how much it is, in him is yes, in him is amen. Therefore, our God can be glorified through us. Right? Yeah, again, I, 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 a promise is very precious to me. I swear it's even impossible uh, to, to our life sometimes. I mean, God swear that, you know, he will bless Abraham. God swear that Jesus should be the high priest, right? And this is, uh, so we learned that uh, these two unchangeable things, uh, Jesus become high priest. Now this is the homework. Your homework will be comparing the high priest in the Old Testament and uh, New Testament. What's the difference between this uh, Aaron's children as high priest and Jesus as high priest. What is the difference according to the book of Hebrew, right? Uh, I would like to uh, go over a few verses just to help you to, to study this homework. This is, uh, yeah, let's read uh, Hebrews 7, 16. Hebrews 7, 16. Uh, Chen Wei. Okay, so Jesus in the Old Testament, they become a high priest according to the law of a fleshly commandment. So Mosaic law says that Aaron's children shall, uh, uh, can be in the high priest, but Jesus, he was according to the power of endless life. God himself, right? God himself uh, uh, promise and swear. And Jesus himself overcome death. So therefore he became the high priest. So it was according to the power of endless life. That is the difference, right? A fleshly commandment, a power of endless life. What's the difference between all, all, New, New Testament, Old Testament uh, high priest? Uh, read uh, 723, 723. Let me uh, call people on. Canada, Canadian uh, Vancouver Church. Do you have any anyone who did not read yet? Looks like we have a lot of people over there. Vancouver Church, Vancouver Brethren. Yeah. 
23. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. Okay, 24. 24, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Yes, oh. Uh -huh. So death prevent high priests from continuing serving in the Old Testament, right? But Jesus Christ as the New, uh, New Testament uh, high priest <clears throat> live forever to make intercession for us. This is the difference. No death prevent them from continue serving according uh, to this verse, right? This is a different, right? Anyone from Vancouver, please read uh, 727. Anyone else? 27, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the peoples. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Okay. Um, yeah, so in the Old Testament, um, they got to, high priests got to offer sacrifice for, for themselves and then for the others daily, right? But what did Jesus do? He only offered up himself once for all. Once for all, period. You cannot crucify him twice, right? How can you crucify him twice, right? But uh, actually later on you will learn that um, the sacrifice, the offer really cannot, in the Old Testament time, really cannot forgive sin, but to remind you of your sin. That's why they got to do it every year. And, 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 and like uh, for everybody, they got to do it daily. But uh, Jesus do it once for all, right? Let uh, Vancouver Church please continue to read seven twenty eight. Seven twenty eight. Twenty eight. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness, uh, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. Amen. Right. The law in the Old Testament appointed a weak man. A person need to offer sacrifice for himself before he uh, help other people doing sacrifice, right? He, because he himself was weak. weak uh, as, uh, so Paul appointed a weak man as a high priest, but Jesus is God's son. God appointed his son as high priest who has been perfected forever, right? Now he was perfect. <clears throat> One more differences. Again, this will be your homework, right? But we do it together. Again, this, please, uh, yeah, try to do this homework too. Chapter 8, verse 5. Vancouver Church. 8, verse 1. Now, this is the main point of the things verse we five. are seeing. Oh, verse 8, five. verse 5. Verse 5. Who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Yeah, they serve the things that is the copy or shadow of the heavenly things. In the uh, Old Testament, right? Because everything is shadows, it's only a copy of heavenly things, right? They serve in the earthly tent. Sister, you're right. Please continue reading. Uh, the same person, right? Please read 8, verse 1 and 2. Verse 7? No, chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. One. Verse 1. Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the, in the heavens, too. The minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. So really, the true, where is the true tabernacle? Sister, what is your name? The one we just read? Chantel. Chantel, where is, what or what is the true technical? When we talk about true technical, that Jesus is serving over there, where is it? Not earthly technical, but true technical. Where is it? Chantel? Um, true tabernacle. Yeah. Not, earth, not earthly tabernacle. Jesus is serving right now in the true tabernacle. Where is it? Church. 
Okay, that's good. Uh, that's good. I like that too. But uh, of course, he was uh, elevated uh, by the uh, to heaven, right? So, so, so really, he was serving uh, in heaven. He continued to pray for us, right? Serving as a high priest, right? Is that right? High priest yes. to, to make peace between God and men, right? So really, true tabernacle is in heaven, according to what you just read, uh, verse 1. Verse 1 says that he already sit on, sit in heaven by the right-hand side of the mighty one, right? Is that right, Sintel? Yes. Yes. And that is century, verse 2. That is true tabernacle. And this is made by God, not made by Moses or any human hands. So the difference of the uh, priesthood uh, in the Old Testament is that they, all their tents, all the ceremony, they are only a copy. They are only a shadow. They are only a copy of the heavenly one. So if you have chance to study uh, Hui Mu, the Zhen Li, okay? Um, I don't know, have you ever studied the topic of the truth pertaining uh, tabernacle? They will teach to all the spiritual meaning, what, what is the, what does the uh, lamp stand, uh, uh, lamp stand, stand, stand uh, stands for? Why, why we need to have uh, show bread? Why a golden censer was there? And they, they all got spiritual meaning and they are all copied from the heavenly kingdom. Spiritual places. Uh, so therefore they got spiritual meaning, right? Again, uh, we talk about uh, Jesus was a high priest in the New Testament, which is different uh, because, uh, yeah, this is the answer, right? <clears throat> now let's talk about this high priest in the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ. He really bring us a better hope than those who are in the Old Testament. Those high priests can bring them. Jesus uh, bring us a better hope. What did Jesus bring us? Let's read uh, Hebrew chapter seven. Hebrew seven verse nineteen. Hebrew seven nineteen. Vancouver Church, please read. Seven nineteen. Uh, verse. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. Yes, so, so really, uh, through Jesus Christ, we got a better, better hope. So that all can come to the presence of God. You know, in the Old, Old Testament time, they cannot come to the presence of God by themselves. They got to... Again, go through high priest, right? Like today, if you uh, want to have a sing, like brother, what is your name? Brother, what is your name? Who just read? Samuel. Samuel, Samuel hi. Lee. Samuel Lee, hi. How are you? Yeah. Brother Samuel, today, um, leggy. To, <laughs> Brother Samuel, today, if you want to uh, Talk to Jesus, what do you do? Do you need to go through Pastor Timothy Young? Sorry, I don't know, it's lagging, I can't hear. Okay, today, if you want to talk to Jesus, do you need to go through Pastor Timothy Young? No, because he's not my father. <laughs> I'm Samuel Lee, so. Okay, because he's not your father. Yeah, in the, in the Old Testament time, if you want to connect to God, there's no other, other way but go through the high priest, right? That's why we got a better hope. Everybody can directly come to the presence of God. Uh, Samuel, do you remember when Jesus died, what was tear apart from the top to bottom? That, that, that stuff is between holy and most holy. What was tear apart? Samuel, do you, do you know what on was, top? what got torn down uh, oh, from top to bottom? Curtain. Yes, thank you, right? The separation between 
holy and most holy. Uh, there was no way anyone can go into the most holy except the high priest, right? But when Jesus died, that curtain got torn down. No more. Everybody now uh, can go there, right? And this hope is really uh, like an anchor of, the, uh, uh, of, of a boat in the ocean. It was very firm, uh, very, um, very steady. Uh, now let's read uh, uh, in Vancouver Church. Please read uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Uh, Hebrews 6, 19 to 20. Hey, someone else? Hebrews 6, 19 to 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. 20, where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Amen. So this hope, like an anchor. Anchor is something really, uh, when, uh, when you uh, throw the anchor into the ocean, uh, uh, it will not be waved. Uh, it will be very... Uh, very firm and steady, right? Um, and this anchor go into the most holy, uh, wait, I'm sorry, as the anchor of the soul, right? Uh, and, 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 and this anchor really go into the presence behind the curtain, like uh, this hope can reach directly to the presence of God, to the mercy seat where supposed to be hidden in the most holy place, but, but now the curtain is gone, right? The anchor can go there directly. Yeah. So brethren, what Jesus brings us is really amazing, right? Can you imagine if you live in the Old Testament time, but now you live in the New Testament era and you have the Holy Spirit in you and you can see God anytime you like. You can pray anytime you like. It's such a blessing, right? Like uh, anytime, any place. Like that's, that's why the Bible says, pray unceasingly. Uh, uh, pray uh, uh, using uh, all, uh, all types of ways at any kinds of place. Right? Anytime and at any place, uh, you can, you can, offer your prayer because you can, and that prayer can reach to the mercy seat. Oh, that's really amazing grace, right? Now, this is the hope we have. <clears throat> so brethren, we shall continue this hope until the end. Let's read uh, chapter six, verse 11. Many people give up on this hope, oh, but not you, not me, right? Vancouver Church, please, Hebrew 6, 11. Verse 11, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Yes, so we should be diligent if we can do, continue pursuing uh, because we have the full assurance, right? And then uh, we can go, continue to go, to strive to the end. Yeah, so we got a better hope. I know many of you are very frustrated in the life journey. Uh, maybe um, if I, you feel like, man, I offended God, you know? I offended God all the time. Uh, do I still have the hope? Do I need to give up, right? Would he uh, forgive me? Uh, do, can I have a second chance? Right. But again, um, the Lord Jesus Christ that, uh, who brought us salvation really uh, uh, is very loving. He opened a new and, new and living way. Right? <clears throat> so I know we are all very fed up sometimes, very frustrated sometimes um, in the journey. Uh, but again, we should not give up on God. We should not give up on ourselves. Sometimes I'm thinking, if you, keep up on, if you keep up on yourself, keep up on God, where are you going to, where are you going to be landed? What end up 
you will be without continue on this hope. Yeah, so please strive. Yeah, please don't give up. Yeah, uh, Jesus is the high priest. He can make peace between you and God. I remember, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, you heard the story. Um, we have a young man who has been working in the society and um, and uh, he, he thought he was very far away from God already, right? But his mother encouraged him to join NYTS. And um, at that time, that NYTS was his life transform transforming experiences because he had a very special experience. Uh, even though he feel like uh, God did not listen to him anymore. In his prayer, he don't feel like God is listening to him anymore. And uh, suddenly he saw a vision that he become very small, small, small person, right? And then Jesus show up, right? And then Jesus hold his hand, this small person's hand, and, and, and go to God, holding this small person's hand. That is himself, go to God. And at that time, he realized that as if God turning around to face them, right? So Jesus today is still a mediator, the high priest. He will bring us to God. He will continue to pray for you. So since we have this better hope, we should not give up. Uh, I think uh, I will conclude this section right over here. Any question? Uh, does anybody ask me any questions in, the, uh, in my mailbox? I did not check. Do you guys know? Do you know? Okay. Um, because uh, <clears throat> high priest and covenant and um, yeah, those, those topics is a little bit harder, so I spend more time on this. Well, I wish you had break. Let's pray in silence. <clears throat>